In this video, we'll look at the intermolecular forces for H2S, hydrogen sulfide. So the first thing that we ask is, are there any ions present? So we have all nonmetals. We don't have a negative or a positive. There are no ions present. So we can get rid of this part right here. Next, we need to know if we have polar molecules. So H2S, is this a polar molecule? And to figure that out, we'll first look at the Lewis structure and then at the molecular geometry. So there's a difference in electronegativity between the sulfur and the hydrogen. And even though the hydrogen atoms are on opposite sides, we really need to think about the molecular geometry because these two lone pairs up here, they'll actually push those hydrogen atoms down and we won't have a symmetrical molecule. Let's look at this in three dimensions. So here's the H2S molecule. The hydrogens, they're on the bottom. That sulfur, that's the yellow. And on top, there would be two lone pairs. That's why the hydrogens are pushed down. So we can see it's not symmetrical and the sulfur is more electronegative than the hydrogens there. If we look at the surface of the molecule, we can see that the red, that's more negative. Sulfur is more electronegative than hydrogen. And on the bottom, we have a more positive side. Since we have a negative and a positive side, we have poles. So H2S is a polar molecule. So it's a polar molecule. And now we look at, is the hydrogen here, are they bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen? And no, they're bonded to sulfur. So we go down. No, they're not bonded to any of these atoms. And that means the intermolecular forces for H2S, we're going to have dipole-dipole forces. Those are the forces of attraction, and it's due to this being a polar molecule. Note that all molecules have London dispersion forces, so they'll also be present as well. But the primary intermolecular force, that'll be dipole-dipole forces. This is Dr. B looking at the intermolecular forces for H2S, hydrogen sulfide. Thanks for watching.